Welcome to the MSI channel where I try to resurrect an old MSI 8080 computer. Okay, I've got a surprise today. I have a few more S100 cards. And we can take a look at these. Okay, here's our first card. Uh, this is one of those uh, uh, general purpose 100, GB100 boards. Not exactly sure who built those, but I, I did find a few back in the day. And uh, it, it basically adds a, adds a address and data to the, uh, to the bus. And um, I've added a, a simple latch, I believe, to, or maybe just a buffer on this card. I believe I still have the schematics for this, so we'll have to, we'll have to try to find them. But this is my um, Centronics uh, uh, printer port. Um, it has a 50-pin uh, uh, ribbon cable connector at the top, and uh, all hand-wired, and designed by yours truly. Um, so that's what I used for my uh, that's what I used for my printer port. The next port, uh, next card is a um, clock calendar card. Um, QT made quite a bit of uh, uh, S100 cards, I believe. Uh, Computer Systems Inc. And uh, this one is a uh, a real-time clock. It uh, has memory uh, memory backup on it, a battery backup. Um, that's the way they did it back then. So the uh, chip and the battery were all all a, one part of one thing. It's pretty clean. Not sure if I ever had this card up and running or not. Uh, it's marked uh, S100-880 Rev B. And uh, Copyright 1980. Um, yeah. This looks like a 16, 16K card, memory card, 1981, uh, by the Memory Merchant. Um, and maybe you can get up my magnifying glass uh, if I can find it. Uh, just had it. There we go. Let's see, uh, let's see what these chips are. Uh, they are Hitachi HM47211. Ah, 742114. So 2114 is the, uh, is the memory chip. Those are quite popular. Um, I think it's the same chip used in the other uh, 16K cards that uh, that we've seen. Let's see here. The uh, part number of this board is a MM16K14, probably 16K with uh, two 114 chips. And let's take a look at the back. Looks pretty good. <laughs> Somebody wrote on it, as is. I think, uh, I'm not sure when, but a lot of the S100 stuff started to go out on the uh, the junk market. And uh, I would just buy cards. Whenever I saw an S100 card, I would just buy one, buy them up. They were very, very cheap back then. Uh, nobody was doing that. Everybody was moving to, to IBM PCs. Uh, so these things were just, uh, just a dime a dozen. Wow, this is kind of a, a monster of a card. Um... Had a lot of uh, heft to it. It's a little bit weighty. Has a lot of uh, regulation, so it's eating a lot of power. Obviously, a RAM card. Um, and in the corner here, I see bit part number two eight zero one six one two. And um, Dynabyte. It's a Dynabyte 1978, so quite an early card, uh, static RAM, uh, 16K static RAM. So it's eating, eating, a lot of, uh, eating a lot of power back then. 
Uh, this looks like it's using a Texas Instrument TMS 4044 chip. Looks like a pretty nice card. All right, this is a 64K card. Pretty impressive if you could get it to work. Like I said, a lot of the dynamic uh, memory cards were a bit flaky back then. Um, but this one's by the good manufacturer, uh, CCS. Uh, 64K dynamic memory, model 2065. And um, let's see if we can read one of these chips upside down. Um, these are NEC C0194 um, don't recognize that chip but uh, 64K so we had to have 16, 16, 16, and 16 um, quite impressive for the day would have been an expensive card. Uh, CCS 1980. 